couple years ago, I was in uh, West Africa and uh, in Burkina Faso, going from my wife and I traveling from village to village. And we were meeting with the new churches that were beginning in these villages wherever we went. And so after church, I would all, we would always say, we would like to meet with the congregation after the church service is over for an informal time. We have just one question we want to ask. Why have you become Christians? That question I ask wherever I travel around the world. And they said, this is what they said in about the 12 different congregations, I think it was, maybe not that many, uh, maybe 10 or so, that we visited. In each congregation, this is what they would say. Christ has triumphed over the marabou. Ooh. Christ triumphant over the marabou? Really? Absolutely. He has broken their power. Now, who are these marabou? The marabou are spiritual leaders who mix Islam. This is very, very bad Islam. Every devout Muslim would know it's bad Islam. But they mix Islam together with traditional religion and the veneration of the spirits and the occultic powers. I saw one of these marabous walking down the village street one day in one town where we were. He was just filled with bells and pouches with all kinds of occultic paraphernalia in those, in those pouches. As he walked, his whole body tinkled because of all these bells. You know, as he, as he walks along uh, uh, with, with all these bells and stuff like that, you know, just draped with the signs of power. I read a book about these gods there in West Africa here not so long ago, and I counted, what was it, 145 divinities and spirits that they worship? I mean, that's a big deal. The marabous are the guys that are the experts. They know how to handle all these gods. All right. So, your one-year-old daughter becomes ill. What will you do? What must you do? You must go to the marabou and say, my daughter is ill. Please manipulate these powers somehow so that she gets better. And the marabou will say, okay, Give me two goats, and I'll cure her. So you must give him two goats. So they become extremely wealthy. What if you say, well, I can't afford two goats? He'll say, in that case, you will also get sick, and your daughter, you'll both be sick. You must give me two goats. If you don't, the sickness is going to get worse. Or what if you just decide, I'm going to just ignore the marabou and not even go to him when my daughter gets sick? And he learns about that, that your daughter got sick and you didn't call on him. Woo! You are in trouble. That's the marabou. And they mix, they mix their, their, their distorted vision of Islam in the Quran, which they say is, has magical powers, all that kind of thing. It's, it's a bad Islam. Every Muslim would say it's a bad Islam, but they do that along with the traditional occultic powers and so forth, you know. That's the marabou. And every village is beholden to one of these marabou across that whole region. So when we would ask the question, why have you become a Christian? This was the answer we always got. Christ has triumphed over all the powers, including the powers of the marabou. So we pay no more attention at all to the marabou, for Christ is our Lord, not the marabou. He's broken their powers. So they can have a, th a thousand trinkets on their bodies, but we pay no attention. Christ has delivered us from all of that. And so all over the world you find 
that word of witness that Christ is triumphant over the occultic powers. And uh, these occultic powers are, are in cultures everywhere, but, but, but God wants to free us from those powers. I, I remember several years ago, I was in um, Bangladesh, <coughs> and um, working with, uh, visiting a development uh, com- uh, team who are doing agricultural development spent an overnight with them. The next morning at breakfast, they said, we have a problem, we'd like your advice. I'd like you to think about what your advice would be. They said, this is the, this is the situation. Uh, yesterday, a powerful demon entered into the 12-year-old girl who lives across the street from us. They called in the imams to cast out this demon, but they were powerless to do so. It's a powerful demon. And so none of our work team have come to work today. They're afraid that if they come to join us in our project, that this demon will leap from the back of this girl onto them, and they also will become possessed. So our workmen didn't show up today. And uh, if we go out to the village where we're working, why we're told that no one in the village will even speak to us because they're afraid that this demon will get, will get them. So they asked me, what should we do? This is an agricultural development team there in Bangladesh. What would you advise them? What would you say they should do? This is what I said. I said, what you should do is to go to the uh, nearby pastor, the nearby church, share with him what has happened, and then together with the pastor and the elders of the church, you should go to visit that family, and you should share with them that Jesus is triumphant over the demons, that they don't need to fear the demons. Jesus delivers from the demons, and share that with them. And then with their blessing, with their permission, this is a Muslim family, uh, pray in the name of Jesus Christ for the deliverance of that little girl from that demon that had possessed her. And the demons are terrified of Jesus because they know he has triumphed over them. That's what I would recommend that you do. I was really sorry that I needed to go to catch my train right after breakfast So I don't know what they actually did, but I hope that they did that because Christ is triumphant over these powers, and that is very, very good news wherever the gospel goes. And I would suppose that if we had opportunity here uh, to give uh, persons an opportunity to share ways in which they have observed Christ triumphant over the demonic powers that there would be many stories to tell. I find that these stories are to be told around the world, including in my own country, in the USA. We invite you to participate in the International Bible Teaching and Gospel Sharing Project. Whether these Christian expanded educational opportunities will become available to people around the world depends on all of us. We very much need and appreciate your prayer and financial support. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com.